Hello, how are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Just want to take a moment to welcome you again to the Nubian King channel. And you know where I'm at, another construction project. And they got a lot of them going on. You see what they're doing here? They're doing what's called top down building. You see, they done ran up the tower real quick, which is the central support structure, you know? And the reason why you have steel sticking out of these levels of floors is because they're going down and building, you see, they put that floor in, then they're gonna come up, come up, come up, and they're gonna build up. Because when they started, they focus everything on getting the big tower up, and they build around it. That technique is called top down. And this is a ninth uh, position. One night they asked me to come out and man the crane for the night shift, and uh, that's what I'm doing. Nothing happening now, so I got the engine off pretty laid back. The weather's cool, it's not hot, it's pretty comfortable, and uh, here we are, you know. Also, just so you know, I am studying crypto, but. I'm doing a complete course and the reason why is uh, I start studying electronics in Atlanta Georgia at DeVry Institute of Technology back in the day finished that became a uh, electronic technologist that's what they called us because we are able to oscillate between the engineer and technician. I mean, we have skills to repair computers and electronic equipment, and also skills to do, you know, some basic engineering. And in those days, they called that individual electronic technologist. And I did both of them. I repaired mainframe computers, uh, IBM 3270 emulators, and so uh, I was uh, starting out real strong in technology. As a matter of fact, those were the days before the internet, the ethernet and the internet. And so I don't wanna go into details, but the internet was a cable that ran through the entire building. Like you see these skyscrapers, you have one cable to run from the top to the bottom to connect all the computers in the building. That was an intranet. And so out of that, the internet was developed. And you check the history and see how, you know, black people had a very, very integral part in creating the internet. But nevertheless, technology, I remember when I was in school at DeVry, one of the instructors said that this is an 18-month course. And when you all graduate, practically everything that you have studied and learned will be obsolete. Because technology advances exponentially every year, year and a half they're developing a new product they're revising it making it better and he said one thing that technology is going to become smaller and faster because that's what they're striving for to make things faster and smaller and in that course, he went over two components, silicon and gallium arsenide. Silicon is the product that they built the IC chips out of integrated circuits. This is, this is, this is old school, you know, way before 
what we're dealing with now. This is before the cell phone, before digital communication, before push button phones. I mean, I was at the front end of that and we was transitioning from analog to digital. And it was quite interesting, very fun. You know, we was young technicians working in corporate America, making great, stupid, crazy good money. And silicone was the substance that they built the IC chips out of. And as they produced more and more faster signal generators, 1 gig, 10 gigs, 100 gigs, billion cycles per second, silicone began to degrade and dissipate. Its ability to handle that speed began to be real shaky and weak until where the substance itself began to break down. Once you put a signal across silicone that's so incredibly fast, silicone couldn't deal with it. So that was another product that was out, but uh, in America, no one has really did a lot of research to get a good understanding on it. it. It was called gallium arsenide. And at the time, the only people that had real good information on the characteristics of gallium arsenide was some engineers over here in uh, Jerusalem, Israel. They had been developing devices that were super fast signal generators, hundreds of billions of cycles per second. And that was way beyond silicone ability to handle that speed. So they used gallium arsenide and they put the fastest signal generator out in the industry at the time and it did not even excite the gallium arsenide which means that if they got a signal generator that, that as an example is putting out a hundred million cycles per second that means it go positive negative 100 million times in one second Zzzup. Gallium arsenide wasn't even like, <laughs> yeah, right, okay. And so that gave them so much excitement because now they can speed up because, you know, um, engineering signal generators was no problem. They could engineer them all the way up into the terabytes per second. But what type of equipment down line could handle that speed? Gallium arsenide was the next one. And lo and behold, these people over here, the engineers in Jerusalem, had more experience in dealing with gallium arsenide. And so now we're dealing with Taiwan producing superconductor chips. And, and the next thing is, when you reach speeds like that, you have to consider heat. So your substance need to be able to deal with the speed and the heat, dissipating the heat. And so they got these chips now out of Taiwan. Man, these bad boys is super powerful. And that's what's behind this artificial intelligence, being able to process billions and billions of bits of information per second. Now, what I'm sharing with you, you may be familiar with it or you may not, but the reason why I am studying crypto is because that's another technology that I didn't know about. And I refuse to fall behind in this tech, you know, saying industry. So I'm doing a full course from start to finish, from beginner to mastery of cryptocurrency, blockchain, DeFi, you know, decentralized finance, the whole nine yards. And it's very interesting. I've already bought my hard wallet. I got the uh, Ledger Nano Plus. 
and I just got it from Amazon and now I'm going to uh, you know work on setting it up and get everything situated because uh, am I studying crypto to strictly invest to make money yes but that's just only a part of it you know my greater motivation is I don't want to be left behind in technology and you know I'll be you know I'm uncomfortable when you get to talking about the crypto and the blockchain like you have a lot of people today as long as cell phones been out you have a lot of people that are still intimidated and you know it just hard it saddens me to to hear a senior brother or sister that's not even really old they like 50 and they talking about well you know I ain't I ain't really too I ain't, I ain't really up on technology like that and and they make it seem like it's something wrong to be able to utilize a cell phone beyond just making a phone call oh don't talk about whatsapp oh don't talk about ways Ooh, all them other apps you get into download and and i remember one time i had a situation with a um, sister she was selling a product and she had a list of a, she was selling body oils she had a list of 100 different type oils and she she wanted to tell me what type of oil she had but she literally wanted to read the paper i'm like how, well, how many do you have she said i have 100 i said listen why don't you just take a picture and shoot it over to my whatsapp she didn't even know how to do that she said, oh, well, you know, I, I'm not really that familiar with, you know, I mean, these phones, I don't And she said in a manner like something was wrong with the phone. There's nothing wrong with the phone. Don't make it seem like the phone, the bandit. You just have not been keeping up with technology enough to know how to open your WhatsApp and just take a picture. And I tried to explain it to her. She just got frustrated. She didn't know. She kept talking about these phones. Like something was wrong with the phone. I refuse to be like that. And I hope you don't be like that. You know, to where you just don't keep up with technology to the point where you don't even know how to take a picture with WhatsApp. Come on now. Come on, come on, come on. You got to keep up with this technology. You know, you don't lay back in fear and just let it pass by and you become a dinosaur. But you have grandchildren that are mean with these phones and apps and children, you know, it always be the youth is dealing with the cell phone. You know, I was looking at this information yesterday about dementia and one of the major causes of dementia and Alzheimer is the lack of brain use. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't the lack of brain functioning, it was the lack of brain use. You know, it's like when you get out of uh, high school, for instance, most people get into a regimented type life. They get a job, they get up, go to work, and do the same thing. And it's nothing to challenge your mind, challenge your brain. And you get so good at your job, what they say is second thought, second nature. I mean, you don't have to think about it. And you don't. You've been doing it for so long, you don't really don't have to think about it. And that's bad because what happened? Your brain is a muscle and begin to go through what's called atrophy. It begins to settle and shrink. And so when you look at elder people, when they're getting up in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, believe it or not, their brains get smaller. Now, in reduction of brain size, now you don't, you've lost the capacity to be able to think and calculate and make those different decisions because you haven't been exercising your brain to the point where, you know, you've been keeping that muscle working your brain is a muscle just like your heart 
It's just like you go to the gym and you lift weights and do curls and bench press and squats. It's certain things that you do with your brain to help keep it strong. Yeah, so you have to always been, you know, keep reading and, and learning new information and thinking and having conversation with people and going over ideas, ideologies and concepts. You know, they even have apps where you get on the app and you have to pick which bird is going in the opposite direction than all the other birds. Which way did the ball bounce? You know, I've used them apps and they're a lot of fun, you know. And those apps are designed to ex exercise your brain, exercise your mind. You know what I'm saying? So don't get to a point where you allow technology to slip by you and you just be like, ah, I don't want to deal with this technology, man. And man, you know, don't do that. Don't do that. And with the internet, oh, woo -wee. sometime when I'm doing my podcast, I'll be explaining something and going through something. And as I'm talking to you, I'll be going through the internet looking up stuff to make sure, you know, I'm telling you correct. So that's saying while I'm actually talking to you, I'm clicking on pages, I'm looking through stuff on the internet, and I'm keeping a conversation going at the same time. That's called multitasking. I'm talking and I'm reading. And 97% of the time, you don't even know it. Because I keep my flow going with my conversation, and I'm also looking at them screens on the computer. And I love it. And I'm 63, and I love it. Ooh, I love it, man. And, and I keep going. And 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 I I, I, th I don't know if I told you, but I'm also studying the lottery system. Over here in Israel, technology is a superpower. Like in America, you have sports, sports industry and the entertainment industry. You can be a DJ in America and become a multimillionaire. In Israel, it's technology. You can get in these startups and they have these incubators and you can come up with all the cash you need to start your company. Easy. Because what do they call this? Startup nation. So, when I went into the lottery, a girlfriend of mine, she came to me and she asked, she said, Nubian King, I know you're good with numbers and business and you like figuring things out. You know, we have a, a lotto group that's four of us and we would like to uh, know if you might would like to be a part of it, help figure out picking numbers. And I'm like, yeah. No problem. Why not? So she gave me a book. And in that book that was written by this guy had won the lottery seven times. So since he had won the lottery seven times, you know, obviously he had a right, you know, to write a book. And after reading the book, some very basic uh, concepts stuck out. And I remember and, you know, he, he talked about hot numbers and he talked about cold numbers. Okay. And uh, once you go through and you get your hot numbers, you get your cold numbers, you stick to them. You don't change. You lay right there with them. You play them. And eventually, they, you know, we hit. And a, and a few other things. So I'm studying the lottery system here in Israel. And the website is just an ocean of information. And one thing that's really uh, impressive is that they've programmed the website to go and look through the past 12, 25, 50, 100, 500, and 1,000 winning numbers. But they program it to go 
when you say, okay, I want to look at all the past 100 winning numbers, hot numbers, and it'll give you all those numbers that they consider hot, which have shown up 20 times or more in the past 100 wins, okay? And then you go and click and say, I want to see all the cold numbers. And same thing, it'll come up and show you all the cold numbers that have not won 20 times, have not come up 20 times in the last 100. And then you could change it. Let's look at 500. Let's look at 1,000 wins. And it'll show you all the numbers. Now, back in the day when the sister gave me that book, after reading it and understanding the hot and cold numbers, I had to manually go and look at all of these numbers one by one. And I will have to put, okay, when I see the number one, I go through 50 wins. And I saw the one 10 times. And then I go to two, I saw the two six times. I saw the three 15 times. I saw the four, you know, like that. So I had to manually do it. Well, today, because of the uh, website, the, the, you know, the Israeli put together for the lotto, they do all the heavy lifting. And so I was talking with a friend of mine, my best friend, living down in uh, South Florida, and she was telling me about, she deal with the lottery over there, the Lotto lottery, what have you in America, in Florida. And she was asking me to help her come up with numbers. And so I explained to her what I'm explaining to you about the hot and cold numbers. And so I was at my computer and I said, okay. I said, what's the name of the lottery in America? She gave me the name and I went to and I found the, the lotto website in America. And when I went through it, it didn't have too much information. I mean, nothing about hot and cold number. It gave you all the past winners, you know, up to whatever date you wanted. But it did not do no nothing extra for you, like help you to, you know. And so, you know, I sat there about 30 minutes and made sure that I had clicked on every link to make sure I wasn't overlooking anything. I reported to her that I don't see on the website in the lottery in the Powerball the way they got the information laid out here in Israel with the lotto the loto you would you would have to do what I did manually go through every number and she don't have that kind of time and you know and neither do I I wasn't interested in doing it Cause you know, in, in, over here in Israel, they got it laid out, and I'm like, man, I don't want to go back doing that manually. But anyway, you know, so I'm just sharing it with you to, to show you how I keep my head into something, learning something new, thinking, figuring, considering, calculating to keep my mind sharp. Because I like learning for one thing, and just like the sister said, I do like figuring stuff out. You know, and being that I studied at DeVry, it kind of puts you in a mindset of uh, thinking. Because here it is, you sitting before this computer. And the only thing you see moving is the screen. But you don't see the screen moving. You see images that come up on the screen. But when you open the computer, you don't see nothing moving. And you got to repair it. So how did you repair something you don't see? You understand? Now you got to come up with a strategy on how to do that. And it can be done, you know. I always use the split half technique. Meaning that you, you, you get the schematic, which is the blueprint of the computer. It's called schematic. And you go to the halfway point between the input and output, the in and out, okay? You go halfway and you check all your points there. And if you check your point there and they're good, then you go toward the output because what's happening, you got a good input, but the output is bad. So you, somewhere in this 
board, you got 115 IC chips. And you got diodes, you got resistors, you got capacitors, you know, all this other peripheral stuff. And you got an output, you got a 15, a 23 pin output, and one of those leg pin are bad. Now you gotta find out where that bad signal is coming from. And you got over a hundred different chips. And each chip could have up to 15, 32 legs, pins coming out of it. A lot of information. I mean, goo gobs information. So how are you going to sit there and get this board repaired in less than eight hours? Because you got to do several of them. That's your job. So you got to develop a technique. And the technique was the split half technique. You get the schematic. You go halfway. You check all the points. And if all those points are good, then you split split it again toward the output. You go halfway toward the output and check those points. Now, when you get there and they're all good, you split it again and you check. Now, when you check, boom, you find one is bad. So now what you do, you go one step backward to that half that you had split. And in between there... And the point that's bad is the problem. Because remember, that last point prior to the bad point, all the information was good. You checked it. Then you go forward halfway and you got a bad output. So the problem is in between the last checkpoint that had all good points and that bad point. So somewhere in there is a bad component. And that's where you do those massive systems you call you know you split half and when i worked at a uh, digital equipment corporation i was a uh, technician that worked on the mainframe you know you had different parts the mainframe was a system <clears throat> that as as uh, the world was going into internet this was the internet before the internet where they were connecting databases. The world's largest database at the time was in Stuttgart, Germany. And in America, it was um, it was travelers down in Florida. They had the largest databases in the Western Hemisphere. You could connect to it, but you needed an IBM 3270, which was a mainframe. Now that mainframe could process a whole lot of different, you know, information, but at the same time, it could connect to several different computers. And those several different computers connecting to the mainframe would get them connected to the databases because the protocol that the databases operated from was the world standard at the time, which is IBM 3270 emulator. That's what the protocol operated on. Now, peep this. The company that I worked for, it was a small technological firm in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. It was in actually Buckhead. It was called TAC, T-A-C, Technical Analysis Corporation. They developed a board that you can connect to your PC and down line, the output, it looked like the IBM, the big IBM 3270 mainframe. Now you could, as a person sitting in your house, access the databases and get all that information. See, all this was prior to the internet. What I'm telling you is actually history that I live, I worked, and helped to uh, develop. Okay? And I'm, uh, I'm running this down to you because it helped keep my brain exercise and as I talk to you about it it's actually bringing my memories and and also it's interesting I mean you 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 can't do anything with it but it's just interesting to hear your brother run this stuff down you know because I was deep into it until I get thrown off with some old stuff that you know I've said many times dang I wish I'd have never got with them clowns 
But, you know, I landed on my feet. Look at me. You know, I'm operating these cranes and I'm making decent money. You know, I mean, I really don't have nothing to complain about. You know, I'm in Israel. And, you know, they see me as the American. You know, I come on the project, people shaking hands. Hey, how you doing? You know, whatever. No disrespect. He's an operator. And just like um, before you get in the crane, you have to do a, a safety course. You know, they tell you about their yard and tell you about everything, everything like that. But when they look at my credential, my licenses, my permit and everything, they say, we ain't got to say nothing, this operator. So, you know, uh, we sign the papers and they go over basic things like each, each, each operation have each project have its own little differences. Like, you know, this area here, they'll probably say, well, tonight you won't have to lower anything down there. All your work will be over here when these guys show up, you know, stuff like that. But so far as the crane and how to do this and how to do that, nah, they don't do that. Because they see I walked in the office with the proper uh, safety PPE, personal protection equipment, my safety helmet, my vest and everything. And um, to us, a lot of stuff they don't even have to go over because it's, it, it's just be redundant. Show me the crane. Let me get to work, you know. And then I come over, look at the crane, do my assessment, and okay, say to, you know, it's okay. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, share that with you all. I was thinking about it, and I just figured that because you all are intelligent listeners, it just may be something interesting for you to hear about technology. And remember, if you have grandchildren today, and they're five, six, seven years old. Just think about it. They don't even know what a rotary cell phone, a rotary, I mean, a, a land phone, a landline phone is. You know, just think your five year old, a 10 year old grandchild have never seen a dial phone, you know, where you put your finger and you roll it around, yink it, yink, yink it, yink. And you know, whatever number you is, you got to stick your finger in the hole of that number and dial it around and wait and it go back dial it around a lot of these children never seen that ever i remember i saw a video once of this girl young daughter she may have been about 10 and her grandmother had a rotary phone in the house and they asked her what is it and she went up and she had no idea she says they said it's a telephone because she's born in a generation of iphone ipad laptops you know all that type of technology and they had to show her how to use the rotary telephone you know and i came through the era where the rotary telephone is analog and then it went to the push button which was digital and then the computer i remember i got one of those first computer personal computers came out that apple uh uh produce yeah one of those what was it, apple IIe something you know way back in the day when they had the five and a quarter floppy disk drive big old plastic like this you stick it in there close the latch and wait and you hear it wind up and then it just take almost so long for the computer to start and the screen was either amber or orange like you could change the color amber or orange and it's low very low low quality you can see the little lines you know for those of you all that may remember even had them computers when they first came out and you know what was really special is digital equipment corporation we created that irma card i-r-m-a and the irma card was a card that you could put inside of your PC, your personal computer, and it would look like an IBM 3270 downline. We created that car at Technical Analysis Corporation in, in uh, Buckhead, and DEC bought that company out, Digital Equipment Corporation. And so we moved from Buckhead up to Norcross, and we was, we was producing them Irma cars by the thousands every month. And um, when when laptops start kicking in and mobile, you know, 
it was no need for the card to click inside a, a card slot inside of your PC. You remember them IBM PC, the big box? That's where the card was would go in. But when laptops began to take off, and, and you know people was like moving around, so the orders for those cards began to drop off. So what the engineers did, they developed a box to where all they had to do, you could put your coaxial cable and what was RS32 cable into the computer laptop and connect to a phone line, a standard, you know, phone line. And now you still can get to the to the main front, to the um, you know, the databases. Now the box that that product came in was made from an outside third party. We produced the internal board. You know, we 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 had the uh, the circuit board produced out of Florida by this company named Tropical, and they was a new company. See, what I'm talking about, a lot of this stuff was just breaking out. So so a lot of them companies was new. And they was young and they was figuring stuff out. And so we had our boys made by this company named Tropical. That was a new outfit just, just opened down in Florida. And they was having a problem with the etching process. Now, I ain't not going to go into that because all that technical stuff you don't need to know. But anyway, they was having a problem. Well, nevertheless, we got the product up and running. And who come knocking Apple? Apple wanted to make a $5 million purchase of these Irma card standalone boards. And so, yeah, you know, we, we, we really hustled and got them ready. And lo and behold, Apple, they canceled the deal. Why? You ain't gonna believe it. Cause they said, they complained that be, um, the top part of the board was one shade off than the bottom. So far as color. And we like, what? We looked at, you can't even tell. What did you tell? It was a made trumped up bullshit that the Apple did. And I'm just telling you history, right? And you never know this because this wasn't something to hit the news. We lived through this as technicians and employees of the company. So Apple, Apple canceled the deal. We had $5 million of these boards. I mean, we had the warehouse full. We literally had boards line up and down the hallway inside the building thousands of these 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 uh boxes with these Irma boards and power supply it was it was it was bad now and apple counted everything five million dollars because they said the shade of the top and the box the top and the bottom of the box is off and we like what so so back in those days Apple didn't have a luxurious reputation in the industry because they did that type of thing. You know, they was young and yes, they, they, they produce, you know, the portion of the computer, but the, all the peripheral equipment, someone else did it and they wasn't real easy to work with. So nevertheless, they canceled the order. We walking up down the hall and around the building and, and the Irma boards is stacked all over the place. This went on for several weeks. Then one day, somebody pops up from some company we ain't heard of somewhere, and they gave us some specs on, on, on boards that they wanted. And look up, they is they this the exact same specification that Apple wanted. What? And we had all the boards already ready to go out the door. Now because the company had put so much manpower paying us to do it, buying the part, millions of dollars apart, and all the other stuff that, you know, created the cost to produce the board. They was hot for it to get rid of. They didn't want to throw them away, but they just didn't know what to do. And magically delicious, somebody popped up and gave us a specification that matched the exact same specs that these boards were sitting on. How many do you want? The exact same number that Apple ordered. Man, man, the CEO, the, the administrator thought it was a gift from God. 
but the price was much lower than what Apple was originally going to pay five million dollars. Now they just want to—they hot to get them out the 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 the, uh, the the door, and they basically wind up breaking even. They got back their money that they put into it. They didn't make no profit. That five million would have put a nice profit in the company's pocket. <clears throat> but what this newcomer wanted, and what he said he could afford to pay, turns out to be the amount that it costs them to manufacture the board. So you wind up breaking even. You didn't lose no money, but you didn't make no money. And so they closed the deal, signed the check, and the truck came and took all the board. And you know, we found out later on, we found out, and I know you all sharp, you know, already figured out, that was Apple that did that. Yeah, buddy, Apple came first, got everything, Faneged on the deal, reneged on the deal, and somebody else popped up. We didn't know, just happened to have the same spec and got it at cost. Turned out he was from Apple. Yeah, they did that, man. They think it's just how Pop up tell you. Wee, these jokers is dirty. <laughs> I remember that, you know, because I was a technician. Matter of fact, I was a lead technician in putting that project together. Because I figured out what was wrong with the PC board as to why nothing worked. You know, and um, just 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 tell you without going into heavy detail, the company that opened, uh, started in Florida was new. And, you know, when I asked who was the manufacturer of the board, they said Tropical out of Florida. So I looked and found out who Tropical was and found out there was a new company. And I said, okay, so I got my X-Acto knife. I don't know if you know what that is. The X-Acto knife is that super incredibly sharp knife that you could cut a person's skin and they wouldn't even feel it until the blood started running because the blood run at 98.6. But you can cut them and the flesh is open and they won't even know it. That's how sharp this knife is. It's called an exacto knife. Some of you may be familiar with it. But anyway, I took that knife and I cut between all of the traces on the board. And that's what solved the problem. And after doing that, they made me lead tech over the project. And we got 200 of them boards ready in one day. Yeah, buddy, Apple jammed us. They got us. They got us good, man. It was like, oh boy, we don't want that. The color ain't right. <laughs> Ooh -wee. Wow. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. I thought you might like it. You know, while I'm sitting here quiet, it's cool. I should have brought me a uh, man. Should have brought me a sweatshirt or something. But you know, you're hot during the day. I'll be all right. Anyway, enjoyed talking to you. Love you with a perfect love. I love you from the basement of my heart to the attic of my mind. That's a whole lot of love. I do. And then how much of that whole lot of love, how long? I love you 24-7. That means non-stop, day and night. Even when I'm asleep, I'm still in love with you. Thanks for listening. Shalom, shalom.